Okay, if you've been following the book of Job with us, there's been three friends that are not helping. Job has responded as, you're not helping. Your words are of no value. <clears throat> you're quacks. You are vain. Then answers Zophar chapter 20, the Namanthite, and said, Therefore do my thoughts cause me to answer. No, you don't need an answer. Job has respectfully. Job has sarcastically. Job has angrily said, shut up. And for this I make haste. That's a sin. When you speak without thinking. Job has just got finished talking. Oh, that was my turn. Probably couldn't wait to Job finish. And as you read the book of Job, you'll find out there are people trying to interrupt. You see it in the passage. I have heard to check. That's the only time that word shows up. And that is stop. In the game of chess, you use checkmate. You say check. And you, you come to a, a stopping. You gotta, there's only one thing you can do. You gotta move the, you gotta, Move the king or put somebody in position so your king's not going to die. I heard the check of my reproach. <clears throat> and the spirit of my understanding caused me to answer. But Job told him to stop. Knowest thou, knowest thou Job, not this of old since men have been placed on the earth? Job's not that old. We are in the realm of the grandchildren of Esau. And it's been many years. That the triumphing of the wicked. Now from chapter 5 to chapter 29. We're going to do a great study on the wicked man. We've already had a study about the wicked. A few chapters ago. And, believe it or not, what Zophar is going to say from chapter 5 on is 100% right. But not for Job. As I said, there's doctrine in here we can apply, but it does not apply to Job. So i got to hurry up and say something. What are you going to say? I'm going to speak about the wicked. And there's only one implication that Zophar has. It's you, Job. And his friends have been, Job, you're going to hell. Job, you're the wicked man. You are in the condition you are because God is so angry with you. Job 1 and 2, which the men don't know, that's not the case. So people speak without knowing. And it happens all the time. So the triumph of the wicked, the, the victory of the wicked is short. That's true. The joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. And the Bible speaks about many times as far as the wicked. And it looks like they're great. And we have envy against them. And their children are doing well. And their houses are doing well. And they're rich. They got the jobs and all that. But we don't know what's behind the scenes. We don't know, you know, how much drugs they're doing. How much alcohol they got. They don't realize how bad the marriage may be. What trouble the kids are in. You may be more peace than what he's got peace. And then the wicked man dies. He goes off to hell for all eternity. You're saved. You're in the Lord. You're absent from the body and present with the Lord. You get better. Though his excellency, this is all the wicked man, mount up to the heavens and his head reached the clouds. There's an expression, your head in the clouds. Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. And now, this is not the soul, this is the, the body. As animal or dog poop on the ground, it will eventually wear away, go away and decay and won't be there forever. Dry up and crumble up. And there's nothing new we haven't learned already. Job's already told us man will be corrupt. Now we let, read in the last few chapters, Job says, Though the worms eat this body, though this body go into corruption, I will see God, my Redeemer. 
Zophar is throwing, you're going to rot, and you're not going to see God, because you're not right with God, because you're wicked. This is the answer what Job said, hey, I'm going to see my Redeemer, chapter 19. Yeah? The answer is, well, you're wicked. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? In a hole in the ground, in a sepulcher, put into ashes, whatever they do with the body. He shall fly away as a dream. Many dreams are forgotten. Many dreams we dream we don't even remember. We don't even knew we dreamed. And shall not be found. Again, we've had dreams. Oh, we could just remember. They're gone. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Someone looking for... I had a great dream last night. What was it? I don't remember. I gotta go find... I gotta remember. I gotta go back to sleep to get that dream. Not done that. I've had great dreams. When I go back to sleep, I want it back. And it's gone. That's what man is. You know, we've... I don't know how many presidents we have, but... Many of them today are in a grave, and we know basics about them, but... How much information do we really know about our U.S. president? None. They're dead. They're gone. They're not going to the White House no more. And people we know, you will eventually probably forget most of the people you know who have died and gone on. Your life will live, I mean, unless they're very close and very loving to you, many people you know, it will die off. And People who died in China today, we don't know who they are, and we don't really have a care. As they will have in Americans. The eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold him. Once you die, you're not coming home. At that time when they seal up the casket and put it in the hole or in the, in the, uh, the, uh, the sepulcher, you're sealed up. They don't usually take you back out and open it up and look at you. Very rare do they do that. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hand shall restore their goods. Children are doing right. His bones are full of the sin of his youth. Never repented, never got right with God. You got to realize, if you don't ever repent and get right with God, you have never had the new birth. And I preach on the street, one of the things I preach is, listen, that cookie you stole. That dishonoring your parent because, oh, you know, I wish God would kill him for punishing me. I wish God would take him away. I wish they'd go somewhere else. I wish I had other parents because you are not pleased with what they did for you for a punishment. Or that, I wasn't me that did it, and it was. All those sins are going to mount up because they have not been under the blood to the new birth. When you're born again, then all those sins from the past are under the blood. They're washed, and God forgets. When a, when a man has lived a full amount of years, and I don't know what that is, that guy's got years after years after years of a sin account that has never been washed through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm glad eternity starts before the great white throne judgment. Which shall lie down with him in the dust. When you go into the grave. But the soul, the soul goes off in eternity. The spirit goes back to God. That body's laying there. And if you die in your sins, well, that soul is off into burning in hell. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, he loves it. Now, you, you've met many people like that. you met people that are not ever going to get right with God. They don't want to get right with God. They don't want to hear about God. They don't want, they enjoy their sins. And you met them on Monday morning on the job. When they come in and they brag about their weekend adventures. And I can't wait to TGIF to get that check and do it all over again. That's what the sweetness means. They love it. Though he hide it under his tongue. Some things he's not going to tell. Some they'll brag about. Though he spare it, not tell, not, not, not 
bring it about, and forsake it not. I ain't repenting. I ain't giving up my sins. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it no matter what. That is a sin. Saved or lost, you will stand before God for that sin that you're doing right now. Who, who all you want? It's a sin. Don't tell anybody. Nobody knows. God knows. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place. Behold the evil and the good. God knows what you're doing. You need to repent and get right. He's a wicked man, but keep it still within his mouth. A lot of sins go with the mouth. Alcohol, tobacco products, filthy language of the mouth. Sins. Though he spare it, forsake it not, keep it still in his mouth. Yet his meat in his balls is turned. Sin will give you troubles with your stomach, anxiety of the stomach. It may give you ulcers in your stomach. It may give you digestion problems. It may give you heartburn. It's not healthy. It is gall, gallbladder, of ass, that's a serpent, bitter from the liver within him. It's a wicked snake, poisonous snake of the area that we're reading about. He that swallowed down riches, gold, silver, stock, bonds, wealth. And he shall vomit them up again. When you die, you ain't taking it with you. It's not he with the most toys in the end wins. It's the one with the most toys leaves it in the will. And he goes off into, into the grave naked. Even they put a garment on you, put a suit on you. You're still naked. You'll be peering before God naked. And all those sins are going to come out. And the books are open if you're lost. God shall cast them out of his belly. There are people today, they work for a fortune. They work for riches. They work for something. And when they die, they lose it all. They lose it all. A lot of times it goes in auction houses. I mean, you hear about these big celebrities and they die. Whatever their celebrity, they die. We're going to have this big auction house. They're going to auction this guy's stuff off. Or the family fought for this stuff. Or this stuff ends up in, you know, a, a thrift store. You don't take it with you. There are rich people I've heard about. and They, they get buried with their rich car. Well, that rich car is doing the great. You're not. You're in heaven or hell. Hell without Jesus. He shall suck the poisons of ass. The viper's tongue shall slay him. That's the serpent. That's the old serpent. That's the devil. And in Proverbs, one of the things of the of the serpent's venom is alcohol. And one of the things with the serpent in Revelation chapter 12 is that old serpent, the devil. He'll lavish, he'll get the food like a mother's milk from the devil and to suck on the devil for his sin. Oh, devil, give me more. Devil, give me more. Oh, devil, you're taking care of me. And then death comes and the Bible says torment. Torment. He shall not see the river. There is no water in hell. You know, we read today, as we read in the family Matthew, Jesus said there will be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now think about that for a moment. Those tears have no, no water. Now, when you have tears and you're weeping, water comes. You could take that, that water from your eye, you could put it in your tongue, and tell you it's done. That rich man in hell said, oh, if I could just have a little drop of water, I might cool my tongue. Why don't you take your tears from your eyes? There is none. Why don't you take some sweat? There is none. You know, it's on a very hot day, I know this, being in Florida, you sweat and that breeze comes and touch. You feel a little relaxed. But there is none in hell. And floods. The brooks of honey and butter. There's no butter. There's no honey. There's no sweetness in where you're going. You don't eat when you die. And coming up October 31st, the Mexicans and the Spanish or the Italians. But there are people in the Orient 
that will go to the grave of their ancestors and they will leave food like we do Halloween. That comes from the, 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 the worship of the dead. Our ancestors are going to come out of the grave. And when they come out of the grave, there better be some food there and they're going to come haunt us. That's Halloween. That's why it's wicked and vile. And to answer that from the Bible, do my ancestors come out of the grave and eat? Job chapter 20, Zophar says, no. Now I've been trying to study the spirit world. Are there ghosts? Yes. Can there be ghosts of Christians? Christian, no. I find every evil spirit. There was a spirit that came, he came out of the person, and he, he, he went walking about, and when he came back to that person, he grabbed other spirits worse than him. They make movies about that. When we die, our when all men die, our, all our spirits go back to God. That came from God. That's your breathing. Your soul goes off to heaven or it goes off to hell. Your body goes in the grave. And I do believe in ghosts, and I do believe, even the disciples believe in ghosts, but I don't think they're good. I don't think that, because the Bible says, here's what I want to say. For the Christian, we are absent from the body and present with the Lord. Once we get to heaven, why would we want to come back? Oh, excuse me, God, I don't want to be here with Jesus all the time. Let me go back and, and haunt my family. That which is labored for sh that that which he labored the, the the wicked man for shall he restore and shall not swallow it down. He's not going to keep his riches. He's not going to keep whatever material thing. He's going to give back whatever he's got according to his substance material. Shall the restitution be be. And he shall not rejoice therein. Hey, you may rejoice in your riches and all that today, but when you die, you know what that rich man wanted? The rich man, he had a beautiful house, the Bible says. And all these people. No, it can just have a drop of water. You didn't have water when you, oh, he, I guarantee he had wells. Probably had orchards, probably had, you know, plants and stuff like that. I'm just assuming. He had plenty of water when he was alive, but he ain't no water in hell. And then he says one other thing. He makes a demand of Abraham. Go and have a resurrection of Lazarus so he can tell my family not to come here. He didn't ask for gold. He didn't ask for silver. He didn't ask for anything but a little drop of water or go witness to my family. And he didn't take anything with him. Because he has oppressed and has forsaken the poor, that's a sign of a wicked man. And he doesn't even try to help the poor, he makes them poor. That's a wicked, vile man. According to Zophar. A man that loves the Lord is going to try to help some. And he's going to be smart. But he's going to try to help. Because he has violently taken away an house which he buildeth not. That's the government. The government calls that immolent domain. Today there are fraudulent lawsuits, I call, for stupid things that you ought not even to be taken to court, and you get excess kind of money, you get you get the person's property. I, this one thing I love, I see down here at Daytona Beach on the buses. They got this lawyer to advertise. You've seen those yellow signs in the grocery stores. Caution, wet floor, and a guy doing the you know, the flip. And with that sign, if you slip or fall, we will help you sue those people. You were warned. That's fraudulent. And you're going to stand before God in fraud. That's exactly what we're talking about. Rich men, lawyers, get $400,000 an hour to take, take advantage of, of low poor people. Surely he, he shall not feel quietness in his belly. Again, Acid reflexes and just troubles in your body with all that stuff. Nervousness. And then when you're in hell, torment. He shall not save of that which is he desires. Even if he got what he desired, he's not going to keep it. He's not going to keep it. 
There shall none of his meat be left. Whatever he wants, it's going to be gone, not by him. Therefore shall no man look for his goods. All things will dwell. And when Revelation 20 comes, the Bible says the heaven and earth flee at Jesus Christ on that great white throne judgment. Everything in this earth is going by by burning up in the fervent heat, Peter says. It ain't going to be there. You're going to be, if you're lost and wicked, you're going to be standing before God with no ground. You're going to be in outer space in front of a throne and you're going to be stark naked with the, with the realm of angels and saints and uh, angels that are, are, are for God all against you. You're not going to be able to pull your wallet out. There will be no more wallet. You won't be able to have money. There's no more money. You can't have gold. It's gone. In the fullness of his sufficiency, what, what he su survived on, he shall be in straits. Uh, a very narrow way. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. Every hand of the wicked he will go into a place where wicked people are. Good wicked people. There are good people in hell. But they're wicked. There is no Christian in hell. There's no Bible in hell. When he is about to fill his belly. Now Zophar has got a great thing. Everything's for the belly. You realize if we were, were content with God, the only thing we would desire is to have our body closed and we wouldn't be naked, and to have a, a thirst quencher that, you know, to take care of our thirst, and then to feed our belly. If, and that was it. Man, we would be satisfied and our money would be able to go to other things. And yet there are people in other world, third world nations today, they don't even have that water. They don't even have that food. And it goes on both hands. Either you got too much or you got too little. And then when you go into a place called hell, you will have a lack of everything. No mercy, no grace. God, uh, when he shall fill his belly... God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him. John says, He that has not the sun shall not see life, but the wrath of God. That's hell. He may not get the wrath and anger here in the earth. That's God's long suffering. But oh, when you fall, fall off into hell, according to John the Baptist, that's the wrath. And shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Judgment. Evil. Not all evil is sin. Evil is a consequence of sin. And we look at Job. What is the charge with Job? Job, while you were eating, having a good time, everything came upon you in two chapters as we read it. You know why that happened to you, Job? You know why you lost your family? You know why you lost your animals? You lost your health? Because, Job, you are a wicked man, according to Zophar. God has put the wrath on you. Not true. He shall flee from the iron weapon. It would be a sword, a spear, and a bow of steel shall strike him through. War. It is drawn. And cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall, low bladder, liver. Terrors are upon him. Now, remember Zophar is, is with Job. The attack is against Job. I mean, the wicked man is 100% correct. But as far as Job, he's been with Job for a little while. And his context seems to be about the stomach. What has happened to Job right in front of Zophar that is Job vomiting? Is Job got acid in his stomach and his stomach's got pain? And if that is so, I don't know. If that is so, Job, the reason why you're <coughs> I'm, I'm speculating. 
The reason why your stomach's upset right now, the reason why you're vomiting is because of the wrath of God. Now, we don't know how far Job is suffering with these boils, but if it's going into his stomach, listen, boils is an infection. It affects your whole body. I know that from doctors talk to me when I had my two innocent boils. Job may be at the point right now he's got a stomach illness. And if that is the case, and I don't know, so far as looking at it like, that is why. The wrath of God, Job. You wicked, evil man. So far from the truth. You know, there's one rich man, I won't give you his name, and the guy died, swivel, had all the riches. He wasn't able to eat. He had so many medical problems. All darkness shall be hid in his secret place. A fire not blown shall consume him. Hell. I mean, hell, what keeps hell going? There's no air in hell. Hell. Yet hell still burns. You need a fuel, you need a spark, and you need oxygen. Shall consume. Well, he's not consumed. He is so far wrong. You burn and burn and burn and burn and burn and burn without burning, still burning, and never to be unburned. And shall go ill with him that is left in his tabernacle. Now remember, Job said in 19, no, no worms can see my body. I will see God. So far comes back, yeah, you're going to burn. The heaven shall reveal his iniquity. No, God will. <laughs> For the Christian, that which is wood, hay, or stubble. For the lost man, the books will be open. The earth shall rise up against him. At the great white throne judgment, there is no earth. Revelation 20. It's gone. At the, great, at the judgment seat of Christ, there's no earth. Well, there's an earth, but we're not in there. We've been raptured out of it. The increase of his house shall depart. All the stuff in his house. His goods, everything he has, shall flow. That's the first time that word shows up. Flow away in the day of his wrath. God's wrath. This is the portion of the wicked man from God. True, not Job. And the heritage is appointed unto him by God. It's true. The glory of God. That you do what God tells you to do to be saved. And if you don't, you get the wrath of God. And God has spelled it out in his, in his word. What to do. And what not to do. 